Well, Caitlin, you haven't had that conversation with Kamala Harris because she's been hiding out. I want to have this conversation with you, Senator. Just like Joe Biden hid out before her. I'm, and my point is, when are you and the rest of the media going to demand that Kamala Harris come out and answer questions in an unscripted format about where she stands for this country? Caitlin Collins has a meltdown when Republican Senator Tom Cotton defends President Trump's controversial Q&A at the National Association of Black Journalists. So in this video, we're going to break it all down. Welcome back to the Devore Darkens show. I am Devore Darkens. You guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel so we get this video out to more people just like you and me. Caitlin Collins. I mean, she is unhinged, deranged, and absolutely hates President Trump. There's no question about it. And if you recall her town hall with President Trump, I think this was last year, you want to talk about someone who was nasty, disrespectful to someone who's the former president. And she was just like Rachel Scott from the uh, Q&A that President Trump attended uh, and Vice President Harris did not attend, uh, which was at the National Association of Black Journalists. So this brings us to this video today where the Republican Senator Tom Cotton goes on CNN and he literally calmly dismantles Caitlin Collin. And we're just going to see how they want to continue to push the race they want to continue to push the gender conversation. They want to continue to use his name because he lives rent free in their mind. So without further ado, let's play the video. First off, it's refreshing to see a presidential candidate who's willing to go in front of the media, something that Donald Trump knew would be a tough interview. It turned out to be a hostile adversarial interview, but he's been doing that for nine years. Kamala Harris, meanwhile, has been hiding out for the 10 days that she's been a presidential nominee. Before then, she used to do interviews every five days or so, but now she hasn't faced any media at all. I guess she thinks she can hide out for 100 days until this election. More fundamentally, the issue isn't what race Kamala Harris identifies as. It's the fact that she identifies as a San Francisco liberal. She has a long record, not just as vice president, of being Joe Biden's border czar, standing by the disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal, but running for president herself. She said she was going to take away your health insurance on the job while she was going to give health insurance to illegal aliens and that we'd have a lot more of them because she promised that she would decriminalize illegal immigration. She cast the deciding votes as vice president in the Senate for the trillions of dollars of spending that has unleashed inflation on families that make it harder for them to make ends meet. Kamala Harris is a dangerous San Francisco liberal, and that's what really matters to Americans. Yeah, I didn't hear Donald Trump bring up any of her policy positions today or stances when he was on that stage. But your argument is is that just because she hasn't done an interview since she became the top of the ticket, that it's okay to question what her race is? Well, Caitlin, if you didn't hear Donald Trump talking about her positions and his record, then you didn't watch the interview. It went on for more than 30 minutes. I did watch the, vast the interview, majority Senator. Of it was, Don was Donald Trump talking. The vast majority of it, Caitlin, was Donald Trump talking about his record, contrasting it to the Biden-Harris record of higher inflation and wide open borders and war and chaos around the world. Okay, so you guys seen that. I have three points that I really wanna to touch on. Uh, the first one is it is absolutely true that they are hiding her from tough interviews, okay? For someone like President Trump, okay, who is never gonna get the majority of the black vote, to go to a city like Chicago and sit in front of Rachel Scott from ABC, who does not care about him and everybody's already accusing him of being a racist but to show up and go through that that says something about a person okay so there, there's that and I say that because Vice President Harris isn't going to do the same thing right they're going to do to her what they did to President Biden which is you're only going to see her on a limited basis you're not going to see her face any tough questions you're, you're not going to see her truly challenged and until the debate actually takes place. And that's exactly what happened to President Biden. So they might want to delay the debate because they were fine. But once he got onto that debate stage, everything came falling apart. So I would believe the same thing about her. If she gets on a debate stage with him, she's going to get crushed. There's no question about it. And then the second point is. This is a perfect label. I wish that the Trump team would use this. I think all Republicans need to get into a room and start using these words. San Francisco liberal or San Francisco Democrat. They need to push that type of message out to the American people because a lot of people in America still do not know who she is 
and they don't have an image in their mind of what she stands for. So it's a great opportunity for the Republicans and Trump to push that image out to Americans and get people to connect Vice President Harris with San Francisco liberal. And everybody knows San Francisco is not a place you want to live. And this brings me to my third point, which is the policies that he did bring up. And the media is absolutely going to ignore this, uh, that he did do right by uh, black Americans. And he's never going to get any credit for it. I mean, that's just the reality. He, he's never going to get any credit because the majority of black people are programmed by the Democratic machine to think that he is racist, that he's Hitler, and that we should be scared of him. That, that's just what it is. But hey, that's just my mindset on it. Uh, let's continue. And pointing out that she has said things like she wants to eliminate the immigration police and that she believes that Im illegal immigration should be decriminalized and she wants to confiscate private firearms. These are all indisputable things on her record, Caitlin. There's videotape of them. Have you shown that videotape in the last 10 days since she became the presidential yep. nominee for the Democratic Senator, Party? Senator, we have. When she we promises have. to rip away health insurance? We have talked about her past positions and the reversals of those, and we've delved into all of that because that's actually what voters care about. But, but when your party's nominee is on stage telling a panel of three black women that the first black woman to serve as vice president hasn't always identified as black, how does that help your party win elections? Well, Donald Trump said that what matters is that she identifies as a dangerous San Francisco liberal. It's not what race she identifies as. No, he's what she solely identifies focused on race in that comment, What's going to make a difference? Caitlin, the interview was more than 30 minutes long, which is 30 minutes longer than Kamala Harris has had an interview with anyone since she became the presidential nominee. The vast majority of the interview was talking about Kamala Harris's dangerous record on our wide open border, on higher taxes, on taking away health insurance on the job and giving health insurance to illegal aliens. The vast majority of that interview was contrasting the Biden-Harris record and Harris's record from the first time she ran for president to the Trump era record. That's a contrast that Donald Trump will win every day of the week. Okay, so just one point really quick. Uh, he is factually true, right? That whole uh, going back and forth about whatever her race is, I mean, it, it was only for like 30 seconds to a minute max. And his last words out of it was, I don't care if she's Indian or black. You know, he said that he said it was irrelevant, but they're, they're not going to do that. And President Trump has always been a person who just says exactly what he thinks, which means he's not going to be the best person to articulate what he thinks. And when you're on a stage like this and it's already a hostile environment, they are not going to use any critical thinking skills to truly make sure they heard every word that he said. They're going to take the one word that made them emotionally triggered and they're going to run with that. But the last words out of that whole segment was him saying, I don't care if she's Indian or black. It's irrelevant at the end of the day. That's exactly what he said. But they're not going to bring that up, especially someone like Caitlin Collins, who hates President Trump. And you could just see her face. She looks like she's about to blow a freaking gasket. Anyways, let, let's keep going. I know you don't like her policies and and you talk about you call her the San Francisco liberal. I, I saw you saying that with Jake Tapper the other day. But that was not Donald Trump's main point today when, when he was asked about your Republican colleagues on the Hill who refer to her as a DEI hire. He was asked if he believes that she's only on the ticket because She's a black woman. And then he said that she doesn't always claim to be black, which is not true. But but does anything that she has or hasn't said about her heritage have anything to do with her qualifications to to be in the Oval Office? Well, no, Caitlin, that's not what President Trump said. He said he didn't even know what Rachel Scott meant by a DEI hire. And he had no idea why Joe Biden hired her. What really matters is whether the American people want to hire her, given her record. And I promise you, if you think things have been bad for the last four years under Joe Biden, the worst is yet to come if Kamala Harris is the president. I just want to quote his words to you, Senator. He said, I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know. Is she Indian or is she black? You can defend those comments tonight. And he, and he also said either either is fine, both is fine. He loves African Americans, he loves Indian Americans, he loves all Americans. The point is that we don't know where she stands politically because she spent her entire life as a dangerous San Francisco liberal. And now in the last 10 days, she's tried to flip-flop on every single position. 
Well, I should say she hasn't tried to flip-flop because she's sending out anonymous campaign aides to say that she no longer holds views that she held when she ran for president in her own right. When is she going to come on Caitlin Collins' show or Jake Tapper's show or go on 60 Minutes or have an unscripted press conference and answer to the American people where she stands on the issues that matter to them? Okay, so I had to let that play out because, I, you know, he really just dismantled her totally. And he's so dead on about a couple of things. And I want to actually go through them with you guys. The whole DEI situation. It's a freaking hypocrisy, right? Hey, four years ago, my name is President Biden. And I'm going to put the first person of color, the first black woman as vice president and the first black woman on the Supreme Court. Now we fast forward to today and Republicans say, yeah, she was a DEI hire. I mean, guys, it, what are we stupid? It's absolutely the truth. What is so degrading about someone saying she was a DEI hire? The Democrats are the ones who started this. They are the ones who were pushing this rhetoric. President Biden is the one that was the first domino. He went out there publicly and said, I chose her not because she's the best vice president in history. I chose her because she's a woman and she's black. That's exactly what he said. And this brings me to the second point, the line of questioning, right? at the q a where president trump was at today in chicago like the line of questioning was disingenuous meaning if it is about black issues and wanting to hear what his policies are why would you bring up what they were bringing up right you see when you watch the video the uh, third interviewer who's from fox news harris she's the one that had some legitimate questions like hey what is your message to black people? You know, what are you going to do for black people? She asked those questions. The problem is their microphone and it wasn't even working. So, you know, they didn't even have their act together, by the way. That's a whole nother thing. But I digress. I mean, the line of questioning was absolutely disrespectful. You're going to have people out there in the media who are not going to agree with that. They're going to say, no, Rachel Scott, she was spot on with what she was doing and how she set the tone. No, she wasn't. No, she wasn't. This is not a debate, bro. This is, hey, we have a presidential candidate coming here. Let's get him to open up. It's, it's, it's human psychology, right? I want you guys to picture this. I was thinking about this earlier. Imagine your spouse, your significant other, you come home from work. And as soon as you walk in the door, she says, or he says, all these things that you ever did to them that made them upset and that was an indictment on your character. What if they just hit you with 10 different indictments right when you walked through the door? Not, hey, honey, how are you doing? How was your day? Everything good? What do you want for dinner? None of that. Just immediately a, 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 a psychological attack. That's exactly what Rachel Scott did. Now, they're going to say, well, she was very professional. Sure, she professionally attacked the former president. That's exactly what happened. And you don't start off a Q&A that way. And I guarantee if we really pull the clips of the prior conferences that they had, they probably never start that way either. But that's a whole nother thing. So as I wrap up, I want to say this. You know, CNN, Caitlin Collins, th these people are propaganda puppets for the Democratic Party. There's no question about it. They never really have given President Biden hard questions. Um, they were only forced to after the debate because it was so damn obvious and 50 million or 100 million Americans all saw it. So, of course, they're going to have to ask him something, but they're never going to ask her anything. They've yet to do any type of interview with her. They never even pressed her on the fact that she probably covered up President Biden's mental acuity and his dip in performance. They still have yet to press her on that. Where are those people at? Right. Where are those people pressing her on her policy stances? You're not going to find any clips like that. The only clip you can ever find in history where the media was actually pushing back on her was the border. Right. That's the only time. Hey, when are you going to visit the border? You still haven't been to the border. Like that's the only thing that you could pull up on the Internet where the media was pushing back on her. But since then, they haven't. And part of that is because she's been in hiding for so long. President Biden put a muzzle on her. We haven't heard from her until now. So that's what the reality is. And these guys on this whole fake news media, especially, you know, I call them a communist national news. That's who CNN is. 
Caitlin Collins, she's the worst of them. There's, there's no question about it. But hey, that's my mindset about this. What about yours? What do you guys think about this interview? What do you think about uh, uh, Senator Tom Cotton going on there and really checking her, in my opinion? And it's like as if someone was feeding her questions. You know, she's just a robot. She's not critically thinking. She's not unbiased. She has to keep pushing this narrative. It's all about race, 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 race. And they have yet to ever question any policy position from Vice President Harris. But hey, that that that's what I want to know. I want to know what you think about that. Put your answers in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay focused, and stay true. Peace.